Okay. That guy was at the top? Jesse? Uh, it's too dangerous for us to do it now, right? So maybe we want to turn off the meter and then do it? Yeah, there is something to cut here. There is. We just gotta turn this off first. Come on! Susan! Cut this! Are you serious? Really? I guess because, um, mm, it's not this, is it? Because for the cable, they want me to pull it. They don't want me to cut it. Okay, fine. Oh, you know what? Okay, come out of here, dude. This fuse and me. Yes. Rips. It's we want to cut the sofa open, right? Maybe there's like an ungodly amount of catnip inside or something. Why else would they always be here? There better not be like a corpse inside. Ugh. The cats seem attracted to it, but why? I managed to cut the stitches with a piece of glass. I wonder if there is something inside? Hey, look at this. Valerian root extract. Cats love it. It has the same effect on them as catnip. Oh. They go absolutely crazy for it. You found it inside that sofa? Yes. I wonder how it got there. Maybe the Morrisons wanted to leave a goodbye gift for that woman and her dog? Yes. Well, they would. I always thought they were reasonable people. <laughs> Oh, what a shame they moved out. Wow! You girls, come on. What do we do with that? Valerian drops. It's heart medicine. But for some reason, cats find it irresistible. I bet the Morrisons left it there, so the cats would annoy their neighbor. It seems they weren't very fond of her. And we can pour it on the rag. Okay, I think we're getting closer. To what? It's soaked in valerian root extract. Cats will move to wherever I put this rag. I don't find it very pleasant myself, but I probably would if I was a cat. Here? Come on, guys. The body moved over here. Oh, and the lady will move. And then we can move the cabinet. Where are they? Mrs. A. <laughs> well, aren't they quick? This dog is making quite a racket. Someone should complain to the owner, don't you think? Definitely. She should put that broom down for a minute and sort a dog out. Dog lady? Come deal with your problematic dog, please. Your dog is making horrible noise. Can't you do something? It's probably because your wretched cat's upset him again. Poor William. I'd better check on him. Bye. Ooh! William! Come back, my little friend. Oh my goodness! Are you sure the cat'll be alright? Please. These cats can easily outrun some old mutt. <laughs> it seems like you don't just like cats more than dogs. You actively hate dogs. Alright, let's push this. I'm going to push this cabinet out of the way. I remember there was a door behind it. It's too heavy. I don't think that's gonna work. Are you kidding me? I'll show you how it's done. Stand back. Mitzi, when you live alone, 
gotta do all sorts of chores and whatever all by yourself. There, the door everyone's forgotten about. Wow, you're stronger than you look, Mrs. A. Yeah, perhaps I am. Yeah, not just physically, right? Maybe mentally as well. I'll have that broom. Because why not? Why wasn't I surprised to see that old witch with a broom? I bet it's cursed. Basement door. It should mean that nobody's been here for a very long time, right? Since the door has been shut. Water supply for the whole building can be switched off here. There's no need to do that now, though. Extension cord. It looks old, but it seems okay and it's really long too. I'm sure I'll find some use for it. Okay. Coal chute! Coal chute? This is really old, isn't it? It hasn't been used for many years. All flats have central heating these days. It can't be opened by hand. I'll need a crank. Which I conveniently have. Thank you. It's filled with coal. Dirty stuff. That's it? Tin of paint. It's red, the color of blood. Open it. The lid is stuck. Dried up paint is holding it firmly, like a glue. I'll need some tool to prise it open. I'll take the tin once I've managed to open it. It's of no use to me right now. Mmm... Do I have like a knife or anything? Uh, Mitzi! Pick it! Pick it, Mitzi! It's sharp! Do something! Sewing dummy. Hmm... I think I've got an idea. I know how I could pay Brian back for all that he's done to me and the cats. Brian. The guy from Flat 6, right? Yes. Brian. That nasty piece of shit. He deserves to be punished, you know. And this wedding dress will be perfect for this. You ever heard the legend of the Cat Widow? The Cat Widow? No. I can't say I have. Well, you're not from around here. But I'm sure Brian knows it. He grew up in this city, just like me. So, what's it about? It's an old story about a ghost cat who takes a human form to haunt her killer. Wow, that's... pretty crazy, Mrs. A. Do you really think we can pull it off? Yes. Yes, of course. We just need to prepare. A good costume will do the job. This dress, we can alter it. We'll need some red paint, too. Are you sure about that? I promise this will work. And it will give us a chance to check his computer. If he's got one. Okay, so what do we need? Well, basically, we need three things. Tin of red paint. Red paint? There's a tin here. We could use that. Mutilated black dress. The dress will make a great costume. We just need it in black. Also, it should look damaged. That's important. Cat Widow is a ghost after all. I'll need some scissors for that. Mask. We need some kind of mask. I don't want him to recognize me, obviously. <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned that the whole plan is to get him out of the house so that we can look at his computer. Because we're supposed to be looking for the Eye of Adam, right? Now you're pranking Brian, like, come on, lady! Stay focused! <laughs> Do I want to take it now? Alright. Quiet Haven Hotel? Never heard of it. What is this sign doing down here anyway? Maybe this was a hotel previously? Quiet Haven. 
Wall. Strange. This wall looks fresh. Whack it with a broom? No. Okay. There's gotta be something behind the wall. I gotta open this. I opened the coal chute, but like, what do I want to do with it? Freaking put a broom in there. Put a dress in there. Oh! I can hang it back on the thing. Pipes. Yeah, water supply. And that's it. Huh. Hmm. Mitzi? Do you have any advice for me? So, what next? Maybe we can find some clues in the mail? There's a mailbox in the hall. We checked it already. We need a mask. We need something to open the... The tin of red paint with. Yeah, there's no mail. All other compartments are locked. Oh! Mitzi, my girl, can you open this? Do you think you can unlock this mailbox? I think I can most certainly unlock this mailbox. Then do it quickly. Someone can come in any minute. A little room with a mass locksmith. Really? Could you step away towards the stairs and turn around? Please? All right. Master criminal, if anything. Do we know the Eye of Adam's name? What if his real name is Adam? We'll just look in his mail. <laughs> Done. Here's all the mail. Hide it in your pockets and let's get out of here. It was mostly junk mail and leaflets. I threw those away. Okay. Letter to Pauline. Ah, a topic to talk about. It's addressed to Pauline Summers. She's a young mother who lives in flat 8. Not here. She'll be back any minute, and we'll be caught red-handed. Okay. Letter to Joe. It's addressed to Joe Davis. He lives opposite me in flat 3. Where do you want to read it then? Back in our own flat? I suppose. Can we read the letter here? Well, well. Looks like Pauline is looking for a babysitter. This letter says she's supposed to interview an agency nanny later today. Great. I could be a nanny. It's certainly worth a try. But I should warn you. I don't want to have anything to do with that baby. You're gonna have to handle this on your own. Sure, I understand. Leave it to me, Mrs. A. Don't you need, like, actual credentials to be a babysitter? Mitzi, aren't you, like, 20? I don't want you to get sued. Oh, that's the Pauline one. Wrong one. Joe. It's from Dr. Frank Zellman. It appears he's Joe's shrink. Apparently, Joe failed to attend his weekly sessions recently. Well, well. It looks like Joe's just as messed up as I am. Or worse. Who knows? I should be the last to make judgments, really. Yeah, you really should. Joe was the guy that was, uh, we periodically heard him yelling at his wife. Ivy, was it? Okay, well, uh, we have the information about the baby and the mom. Was that flat five and six? And we gotta hope that the babysitter isn't here already. No, this is Brian. So it must be... It must be seven then. Seven and eight. Yep. Seven was Jesse. Eight is Pauline. Is their house so small that the pram has to be outside? Aren't they scared someone will steal it? Coming! Right. Step back. I'll handle this. Oh, hello? Hi. I've heard you're looking for a babysitter. Is that correct? 
Well, yes, that's correct. Look no further. My name is Mitzi Hunt. I'm currently a student, but I'm great with children. And I could really use a job. These school tuitions get pretty expensive these days. I... okay, maybe. But why is Mrs. Ashworth here? Hello, Mrs. Ashworth! <coughs> uh, hi, Pauline. Um... How are you? I'm great, thanks. I haven't seen you for ages. Are you here to apply for a job as well? <laughs> no, of course not. I... It's actually because Mitzi's my niece and I'm recommending her for... Wait, how would we know that she's looking for a babysitter to begin with? Crap. Oh, that's actually one of the excuses! Oh. Mrs. A works for the agency? That sounds fake. No, because she probably knows that Susan doesn't work right now. Lodger? Auntie? I don't think this will work, because how do we know about the job? It's not like she put a posting up anywhere, right? Oh, I'm Mrs. Ashworth's lodger. She kindly offered me a room and we've been living together for the last couple of weeks. I mentioned to her I was looking for a job. My parents pay for the room and school fees, but I could do with some extra spending money. So, anyway, I'm starting this course on child psychology next semester, and I thought it would be useful to get some hands-on experience with little children. My mother always says you have to get your hands dirty to learn something properly. Not that you get dirty hands looking after babies. Just m metaphorically speaking. Mm, diapers and well, stuff. it can get dirty. I hope you understand the job would involve changing nappies too. Yes, of course. I don't have a problem with that. Yes, well, you sure sound enthusiastic. Would you like to come in? Both of you? It's okay. I'll wait. I could really do with your support. What? You know how shy I get sometimes. Yes. Well, you'll... Okay. I think Mitzi wants me to look around at the computers and stuff. You owe me. We need to work together on this. I'll do the talking, I promise. Fine. Just don't overdo it. It's too late for that, Mrs. A. And Pauline's not suspicious about how Susan found out about the job. This one is a problem too, isn't it? <laughs> what a nice flat! I love the wallpaper. Very retro. Um, thanks. I decorated myself just before Alyssa was born. Please follow me. We can talk in the living room. I'll need you to drag her away. How the hell am I supposed to do that? I don't know. I'm sure you can think of something. Why don't you think of something? I told you I don't do babies. I feel so uncomfortable here. I gladly blend with this cheesy wallpaper that you like so much and disappear. I know. So do I. Do you think I know anything about babies? No. But I'm trying to fake it and so far she's buying it. Look, I need you to stay cool and come up with something that'll make her leave the room. Got it? But that's where the problem is. I can't think of anything. Just play it by ear, yeah? We gotta face our problems sometime, I guess. We can't just avoid babies for the rest of our lives. Yeah? Hmm. Pictures. They're mostly photos of a baby. There are a couple of Pauline and her ex, his face missing on each one of them. <laughs> that seems kind of petty. If she wants to cut this guy out of her life so badly, why won't she just take these pictures down? That does seem easier than cutting it out. I should let you know from the start that looking after a toddler is not an easy task. They're just beginning to crawl, they're very curious, and sometimes they can cry for no apparent reason. And my Alyssa, well, she has a very noisy child. Do you have any previous experience with children? This is Mitzi, right? Yes, I used to babysit my neighbor's kids. Excellent. I know we all have to start somewhere, but it helps if you at least know the basics. I'd like to get back to work soon, you see. Just part-time for now. 
That's why I need someone to stay with her. I'm not going to find it easy to be apart from Melissa, but my career has always been important to me as well. They won't wait for me forever. If I don't do this now, they'll just replace me. Hmm, it's tough to be a single mother. No, don't ask that. It just isn't enough support for working parents. Tell me about it. If I don't get back to work in two weeks' time, they will cut my maternity pay in half. What? So I haven't really got a choice. It's either this or Alyssa and me will face the life in poverty. What? Are we not already living in poverty by living in this apartment? I thought everybody here was kind of poor. <laughs> Where do you work? I'm a hotel manager. It's a very competitive industry, but I've always loved it. I miss it a lot. I don't know if I ever want to ask this one. It just seems a little bit too early. I have a great connection with kids. I'm sure I can manage with Alyssa. Okay, I don't doubt that. How about... Would you like to hold Alyssa for a minute? We should probably see if she likes you first. I... Yes, definitely. But... I ought to wash my hands first. Your hands? My hands. I must have touched a million things on my way here. As much as I want to hold her, I just don't think it's safe, you know? Really? What have you been touching? Oh, you know, just ordinary things, this and that. You look pretty clean. I'm sure it'll be okay. Well, if you must know, I... This one is gonna get us fired before we even get a job. Cold? That one could work. Hospital would be a good one, cause... Yeah, lots of germs there. I volunteered at the hospital earlier today. Oh, I'm impressed. You don't see many young people doing that these days. But you're right. As nice as that is of you, there's all sorts of bugs you can pick up in a hospital. It won't hurt to be extra careful. I'll show you to the bathroom. Would you mind oh. answering the door for me? Sure. No problem. It's probably just my friend Kate. Just let her in, please. Is that okay? The bathroom's this way. Follow me. Oh my goodness, it's your house. Your turn, Mrs. A. Seriously? Do something. Anything. Fine. Make sure you scrub those dirty hands really well. <laughs> I need a bit of time. I'll never get sick of Susan and Mitzi talking. Look at that gigantic TV! She is rich! I'm the only one who's poor here! Do I even have a TV? I didn't see one. That's a big TV. We can't go in here, can we? They're not in the bathroom yet. Sounds like Mitzi is telling her some fake stories about her childhood. Maybe I can quickly check that room later, if she eventually starts washing her hands. I think, if it's possible, we should look around before we let the person in, cause one more person means less opportunities to look around. It gets dark early over on this side of the building. But at least there's sunlight. Nothing useful here, just books, 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 and a few toys. Her kitchen looks sparkling clean. Most of these photos show Pauline and her kid. There is also some guy on a few of them, but his face seems to be cut out on every single picture he appears on. Odd. Yeah, that does seem a bit... Is she emotionally stable? Just seems kinda... Hmm. Hello? 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 Are you Kate? I've been sent by the agency. Oh! My name is Rita Tickle. May I come in, please? No! Agency? What agency? The Happy Nanny Babysitter's Agency, of course. We bring fun and professionalism into childminding at a discount price. May I come in, please? Wait, just hang on a second. I believe we have an appointment. It was confirmed by post. Didn't you get a letter? Hang on, I said. Dude, what the hell? She's trying to, like, advance in on my home. 
I'm sorry. The position has already been taken. Oh, great. Are you sure? Yes. yes. I'm sure. Thanks for your time. See ya. Wait, wait, wait. There must have been some kind of mix-up. No, there wasn't a mix-up. You're just too late. Bye. I'd better call the office and find out what happened. I kind of feel bad for her. But hey, Mitzi's probably the better babysitter anyway. You still here? Better not be, because I don't want to see you again. Get the feeling she'll come back though. <laughs> but not yet, okay. Uh. Can we go in the bathroom? Oh my god, a baby. Laptop. It's Pauline's laptop. I don't know enough about computers. I should leave it to Mitzi. Oh, Susan! Come on, you know how to use computers. You have one Facebook friend. Scissors! It seems she spends a lot of time cutting her child's father out of the photographs. Ah, the dark secrets we all keep from the world. Yeah, pretty much. We just all pretend to be okay, right? But deep down, doesn't everybody have their own problems? Stupid woman, leaving a baby right next to a pair of sharp scissors. Is that really any stupider than leaving a baby next to some flowers? Well, this one's probably stupider, because we didn't know that Zoe would have an allergy. There's lots of photos of Pauline and her ex. His face has been cut out on every single one of them. I can hear the water running. I must hurry. They could be out any second now. But I can't use the computer. I got scissors. Do we want to look at the baby? No, we can't even interact with the baby in any way. So, was it my friend at the door? No, just some door-to-door -door salesman. Well, I hope you told him to go to hell. I honestly don't know what these people are thinking. Yeah, me neither. I'm sure it's Kate this time. I'll let her in if you'll excuse me for a minute. Oh, no, 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 I'll Wait. do it, I'll do it. <laughs> One person can do this job. You don't have to have two people plus a baby to go turn off the tap. This one's just weird. This one... I'm feeling really sick all of a sudden. Boom. Do you think you're actually going to throw up? Yes, definitely. Oh, yes. Quickly, go back to the bathroom. I don't mean to be rude, but this is a very expensive carpet. Will you come with me? Please? What if I faint? I, I'm scared. Everything's just spinning around. Can Mrs. Ashworth go with you for a change? It's okay. I'll answer the door and let your friend in, yeah? Well... Fine. I'll put Alyssa in her bed for a minute and I'll come with you. You must have got some bag in the hospital after all. I feel bad for Pauline, because after we're done here, Mitzi's gonna be like, Welp! Actually, I'm not the babysitter. Bye! And then we're gonna get the actual babysitter to go too, right? So she's not gonna have anybody. Oh, I knew it! It's you. Again. Hello. <laughs> Is this flat number eight? My name is Rita Tickle from the Happy Nanny Agency. May I come in, please? No! We don't want to, like, when we reject somebody, just say no. Don't give any reasons, because when you give reasons, people start thinking that it's negotiable. It's not. Look, sweetheart, I'm sorry. I can't help you. You are looking for a nanny, yeah? No, not anymore. I have 10 years experience and training in child <laughs> discipline techniques and behavioral psychology. Also, I am known for good personal hygiene, strong work ethics, and I only take one break every five hours. Just to use the restroom. Wow, that sounds really great, but I don't need your services. You don't need a nanny. 
No. I've decided to give my baby up for adoption. <laughs> You're an evil person. You'll go to hell for doing that to your baby. Yeah. I'm evil. But you're thick. Oh, excuse me. No, but actually, hearing her say that, I feel like I don't want her to babysit my baby anyway, because that sounds like... I don't know, she sounds like she might have some... I don't know, she thinks adoption is evil or something. Can I use the scissors on the... Um, the wedding dress, by the way? Oh, I might have to put the dress back on the rack first, because we can't cut it here, right? Use. Hang back. We gotta go back to the rack to hang it back. Yeah. Is your friend Kate ever gonna actually come? Okay. I can hear the water running. I must hurry. They could be out any second now. Well, I mean, there's really not too much new for us to look at, right? I don't think so. I don't know how to use a computer, so there's not much I can actually do. I can leave. I can leave and get the dress cut, but then it's like, I don't feel like we're supposed to do that now? No, yeah, we can't go down. Oh, we can cut the cable! With scissors? These scissors seem sharp enough. Let's create some diversion. I hope this is what Mitzi had in mind. This seems a little bit dangerous. The electricity and all. Not that again. What happened to the lights? I'm... I'm terrified of the dark. I... I, I, I can't move. Oh god, I can't breathe. Wait, Come actually? Down, right. Probably just that stupid meter. It must have ran out of money again. It's not even that dark. Please, you've got to do something about it. I, th I think I'm going to faint. Fine, just stay in my bedroom. There'll still be plenty of sunlight there at this time of the day. I'll go outside and put some money on the meter. It'll only take a minute. Wait, was she faking or...? That sounded pretty real. <laughs> okay, let's use the computer. No, that must have been fake. <sighs> right. Let's do it. Is that you, Mrs. Ashworth? What happened? Um, no idea. Maybe it's a blackout. Like in the old days. It's probably just the meter. Let me see. So it's not her either. What a waste of time. It's time to leave. This interview is over. How do you know for sure, though? Are you searching through her computer that thoroughly? It gets dark early, over on this side of the building. Hmm. I thought Mitzi was actually claustrophobic or something, but she's just too good at acting and all that. I don't get it. The cable's been cut. But why would anyone do that? I think we're going to go now. This whole power cut gave me a terrible headache. Is that you, Mitzi? But we haven't finished yet. Have you changed your oh. mind about the job? No, of course not. I'm just scared of darkness, and I still feel sick, you know. Perhaps we can continue some other time. I've had it. I'm getting a new fuse box. Was that you, Jesse? Yeah. How are you doing, Pauline? Well, I... we need the power back. Can you do something? Yeah, I can easily fix that. There's an electrical stall that's open till late. I'll get some stuff, and I'll be back before you know it. Bear in mind it's not just the fuse box, it's the cable this time. I'll get a new cable too, don't worry. But in the meantime, go home, find some candles and chill, yeah? Thanks, Jesse. That's awfully nice of you. 
Well, it was great seeing you, but we're going to leave now. Hello. <laughs> Who's that? My name is Rita Tickle. Oh, my God. Uh, who? What the hell is going on here? Do you know this woman, Mrs. Ashworth? I've never seen her before in all my life. <laughs> the darkness hides your lies. Now she'll think we are absolutely crazy. I wouldn't worry too much. You're not exactly the most popular neighbor in the house anyway. Thanks. What? You don't actually care what those idiots think, do you? No. Of course not. It's just that Pauline seems all right. I'm not too proud of causing her all this trouble. It'll get fixed soon. Look, Jesse's gone out. We can now get inside flat seven and see what he's been up to. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. We can also cross Pauline off the list. I've searched through her internet history, and needless to say, there's nothing exciting there. I guess incognito mode is not a thing here. <laughs> Well, it feels like it would be pretty unlikely for a single mother to be the Eye of Adam anyway. Okay. Well, let's go then, Mitzi. Back to flat 7 and 8. 